What is good, guys? It's your boy, Jake Diggy, back with another podcast video. So, me, we tried to do this last time on Twitch, but because my Wi-Fi is absolute garbage dumpster fire, we decided to put videos for now because I think we'll, it'll be easier in terms of connecting. So, we will be talking about My Hero Academia Season 4. So, for those of you who have not seen this season, leave the video. Just leave the video. And now, with me today, to talk about My Hero Academia Season 4, we got Poisonable. Hey guys, thanks for having me, Jay Diddy. Alright, so, without further ado, let's actually begin. So, let's... So, for this season in particular, there were two arcs, right? Two, two big, major arcs. Alright, uh, one was the, was it, the Yakuza arc, and then the other one was the School Festival arc. So... Let's just start with the Yakuza arc, so you want to start things off? Okay, so the main thing about this arc is the villain Overhaul and the, the Yakuza, the Shie Hasaikai. And so their whole main thing was that they could, they developed weapon, uh, they develop bullets uh, that would suppress the quirks of anyone who was shot with the bullets and the way they did this was with uh, the character Aerie who's uh, her quirk is time reversal right? Yeah I believe so. And so what she was able to do is that she could reverse the state of a body to the point where it didn't have its quirk and so the the yakuza was able to weaponize it into bullets that would take down these heroes that would try and stop them yes oh, okay so it's my turn okay one of the things i really liked about this arc though is is that it got pretty dark especially when we find out that every was actually abused a lot like overhaul just to just the like, overall's ability is pretty much well his quirk is that he could pretty much go to someone and just deassemble them by MAGA or particles or something and reassemble them back so it's implied they don't show it but it's implied that what because every at the she can't control her powers and it comes to a point where it's like not controllable where what what he does is that he deassembles her and then reassembles her back and keep on going with that torture. Now I don't know if memory manipulation was involved. Was that involved as well? No, I don't think so. I think it was constantly ripping her apart and uh, repairing her back together again. Yeah, you gotta remember like this is child abuse because she's a little girl and. It was crazy too, cause uh, Midoriyama and uh, uh, Mirio, they went, they actually saw her with over at the very beginning, and he knew that he had to go and like protect her, because he knew that something was up, but Mirio had to make the tough call to let them go, so they could assemble like uh, an alliance and allies with a bunch of heroes to take them down once and for all. Because if they took them down, then even though they might have a better chance to end every suffering big sooner than later, it would have been more risky, and it could like towards death. Because I think they had it. I think I'm not sure, but they had it where like they wanted to catch the entire organization, not just the the head, right? Yeah, they had this whole sting operation, and they didn't want to blow their cover. Exactly, exactly. So, speaking of Wix, let's actually talk about Mirio for a bit. So, I'll let you take this one. So, uh, sorry, repeat that again? Uh, we're going to talk, um, uh, your opinions on Mirio. Oh, I, I love Mirio. I've... Back, back when he was introduced in Season 3, he was a very interesting character. I immediately liked his personality. And that moment in Season 3 where he takes out half the, cla 
half of class 1A with his quirk was just awesome. So like you could totally see why this guy is one of the big three. And then in this season, his his shining his shining moment was when he protected Ari against Overhaul and all the other bad guys, and he held his own. Yeah, there was like three of them, right? Yeah, and he and he was not phased. He took out he took out all of them. I think there was and a point was, in the middle where he lost his ability, but still kept going. Yeah, and even by the end of the season, uh, it's not clear when, if, or when he's gonna get his powers back. But he, even though it upsets him, he doesn't let that stop him. He's not gonna stop that. He's not gonna let that stop him from helping people. Yeah. Which, which was really cool. He he's a really admirable guy. Yeah, especially like it was like his goal to say what well, one million people, right? One million people, I believe. Yeah, but that's why he's called the million. He's like, I can't save everyone, but I can try to save one million. Yeah, Miro was crazy. Even after he lost his power, and then he was like, he was like, he was still gonna be a hero even though he lost his ability. Which is pretty tough because, like, like it got to the point where where, where Midoriya was actually might uh, give him the all for one. But, but whoa! Now all for one, one for all quick, like for a moment. And but uh, of course he declined. He was like no, but not really on the 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 stuff. But he declined. Now. Let's talk, because there's really, in this arc, there's really like, four or five people I really want to talk about in particular. So, the second person I want to talk about is Reg Riot. Reg Riot, oh man. Hiroshima. Yo, this arc made him. This arc straight up made him. Because, like, he was, he was like a right, like, as like a big hardying dude, but he had this moment where like, he... He had this new crazy new upgrade power, and then we got a bit of his backstory where he looked up to this guy. What's his name? Uh, Crimson Greg or something like that. Yeah, his 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 uh his idol is Crimson Riot, so yeah. that's why he call that's why he calls himself Red Riot. Right, right, and like he dyed his hair red just for him too, because he, oh, like... yeah, he he doesn't have red hair. <laughs> well, he has black hair, right, or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, but I remember, like, th there was, like, this big thing where, like, he was scared, right? He was scared to, like, help people at the very beginning. Like, he was just scared and just couldn't act or move or anything of that sort of nature. But, like, uh, what, what, what's the Acid Lady's name? You remember her? Do you know who I'm talking about, the Acid Lady? Yeah, I know, she's, she's sort of like an alien. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her, I'm, try her. I'm trying to think of her name. It's not coming to me. I'm gonna. All right, fine. Right, but I'm. You think of it. I'm gonna continue what I was saying. But even yeah. though that she she was also shining more as a hero than anything, and it turns out that she was scary too. But the more important thing is that apparently they they knew each other, and have like some kind of history of chemistry from way back. I kind of wish we see more of that, but we probably might in the future seasons. But it was actually nice to see that. But more importantly, I think really. His biggest moment, though, was that um, in that flashback where Crimson Greg in an interview was saying that, uh, where he was saying, "Aren't you afraid to fight these people?" And then the Crimson Greg was like, "Ask if there's any hero that isn't afraid, they're, they're lying, or like, or something on the lines of that, or they're not normal." And then he was, he was saying like, "You just gotta be brave, or like, it's just like the courage to." I forgot exactly what he said, but it moved. It moved, it moved Kirishima, especially during the two-on-two -two fight where Fat Gun was like taking a bunch of hits, and then Red Y just like came back and just came in to fight the other dudes, and that shit was crazy. And my favorite part was that, like, he was able to like shine so brightly that, like, according to Fat Gun, was saying that he actually influenced a villain to want to fight him again. Like, he made his bullets be impressed with him. And that is a very big feat in my books. In all honesty. But, that's all I gotta say about Kirishima. 
Uh, what were you? Yeah, and no, one thing I gotta add, one thing that I have to add on about Kirishima is that Kirishima, he, he got to be, he's one of the most likable, he's one of the more, most likable students of Class 1A, because I feel like anyone, like anyone in real life can relate to him. Like, he's just that every guy that, like, he's just your average guy, like, any, like, you or me, like, he's, he's not, like, looking to be the best, he's not, like, he's not, like, super confident, he's just, try, he's just trying to do what's right, and, and he's just doing the best he can. Yeah, yeah. And, and by the way, the, that girl's name was Ashido. Ashido, okay, there, there we go, there we go, that's the Ashton proposing game. Okay, so now let's move on to the next character that we should talk about for this arc, Night Eye. So, since I took Kirishima, I'll let you take care of Night Eye. Your thoughts on Night Eye? At first, I didn't really like Night Eye. I mean, that's because he's always... Yeah, that's because he never... That's because he's hated Deku from the start. Because he always thought that uh, All Might should have given the powers to Mirio instead of uh, Midoriya, and so, but once once he once he started to warm up to him, because he realized that Deku really respects All Might, then he then he sort of became more likable to me, and. His death scene at the end of the arc was just Spoilers! so heartbreaking. Sorry, okay, I had to say that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> His death scene at the end of the arc was, had me tearing up, man. Dude, Dude that was so sad. All my crying, Mario crying. And, like, the thing is that, like, I, I was, like... Like, his ability is that he could pretty much see the future. But, I mean, there was, like, limitations. Like, yeah, like, like every quirk has, like, a bunch of limitations. But, like, it's, like... You haven't seen One Piece, but just to let the One Piece people know, it's like, it's like a half-assed version of Luffy's Sugo Fusion Sight. But, in a sense, he, he saw, like, back when uh, All Might, like, this was a flashback, but back when All Might was, like, very injured, like, he saw his future saying that if All Might continued, he would die. And he was, like, saying that his futures could never be changed. But Midorima was the one that changed the future, like changed his destined future. Cause I think like he saw like that they were supposed to die from overhaul, but like it, it didn't end up going the way because of Eri. But the main point is that like the moment like his entire character starts off with like how he could see the future, but nothing that people do about it can change that future. And then once Midorima changed it and like he's on his deathbed and everything, he was able to come to contentment of how futures can be changed. People have the ability to change the future. And he died happily after seeing Midorima's future where he quote unquote becomes a great hero. Which he might get his powers back but we don't really know. But yeah, that's all I gotta say about Guy Guy. His guessing was sad though. We hear what's saying. Alright. Now the next person that of course we gotta talk about. I mean he's the main villain of this arc. Overhaul. Okay. What do you think of Overhaul's character? That dude was a monster. Like he was a legit monster. Like how could you but he was even though he was despicable and like awful and everything he was so cool like the way he's he's able to like literally like we talked about his quirk of disassembly and reassembly but like he can do that with people and like yeah, yeah, absorb God, them he into can pretty much polymerization himself like straight up I forgot about that Right, that's what he did when he got really big to fight against Deku. Yeah, he can like fuse with he can like fuse with anyone like around him, and then use their quirks. Dude, he like he is so broken. 
And I think, like, in terms of his character, like, at the beginning, he wasn't really, like, part of the Yakuza. I think he was adopted or something like that. I think Ares was supposed to be that Yakuza's boss, uh, granddaughter or something like that. But... The granddaughter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, uh... His whole thing was that, like, Quick Sun exists, right? That That's, like, his whole thing? Or, like... No! His whole thing was, uh... Was like trying a building empire, a bit like trying to bring the yakuza back. Yeah, no, and I think you're right. He didn't. He didn't want. That's why he was doing the whole quirk neutralization thing. He wanted to go back to a time where there were no quirks. And it sense no heroes. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. But obviously things did not go well. But his ability is broken. But before we talk mm. about his end. Let's actually Who talk knows? a bit about uh, what's his we name. We might we might see more of him in the future, maybe. Like he's not dead. He oh, just... whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 Before we go into that, before we go into that, let's talk about. Oh my God, what's his name? Was it what's the League of Villains League? What's his name? Uh, Shimura. T- uh... Yeah, Shimura, right? Shimura, like I forgot uh... his name. Oh my God. God, that's so bad, dude. To- Toma, Toma Shigaraki. There we go. <laughs> Yo, how are you failing so hard? At this? Yo, it's, it's he's hard like practically him. one of the main <laughs> villains of the, of the series. It's like we forget, but oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah Toma. So it was crazy, like when him and Overhaul met, and then like Overhaul just went and like just demolished a couple of his dudes. It was insane. It was absolutely insane what just happened. Like at that moment, and in a sense, it's kind of crazy because like their abilities is a bit similar, where where uh, where uh, where Toma could touch someone and they could decay the entire body, right? And like I would say that Overhaul is actually more powerful than Toma. I think I would say that. But I mean, granted, we didn't see the full capabilities of Toma's uh, quirk. But still, I, I would still say uh, overall is a bit more stronger. But was was the main thing I want to say is that when he was like when he was uh, being quote unquote part of the alliance and and Tomo was and like the other people like uh, the the crazy woman, whatever her name is, like the crazy woman, some other dudes were saying that like, hey, I came here because I want to do whatever I want. I'm not going to do other stuff. And then. Every time, every time Tomo just takes off his hang and we see his face, like, it just like he just becomes like a charismatic dude for the League of Villains, like, straight up, like, like, the fact that he was saying that, um, that he cares about all of them and he wants them all to succeed and he's sending them on a mission to quote-unquote spy on them and keep them under control, that was crazy. And now... Let's talk about the end of Overhaul. You want to take this, or should I take this? Uh, you started off. So when Overhaul was was being transported, like the League of Villains were attacked him, and then I think uh, Tomo was saying some shit. I forgot, but like it was implied that Overhaul suffered and he quote unquote might have died. Might have died. So it was a sag gang to overhaul. I mean, he got what he kind of deserved, but it was still a sag gang for overhaul. All right, so your thoughts on overhaul? I mean, his fate is sort of up in the air, so I hope we do get to see more of him. Yeah, we just gonna have to wait and see, honestly. We just gonna have to wait and see. All right, so now that he's out of the way. Uh, I think that's really it. Oh, wait, 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 before we move on. Let's talk about Deku's 100%, like, like, full, full power, one fall. When he turned blue, and he just went in and just started just destroying people left and right, like, he was so powerful with Eri, like, it was insane. And it was also great to see, because we kind of have an inkling of what he might be by the end of the story. And even then, I'm pretty sure by Angle's story, he'll be even stronger than that, but... The animation of that fight at the very end was phenomenal. I mean, 
I mean, My Hero Academia always has always has great animation, but oh my god, that scene was amazing. If I do say so myself. But yes. Yeah, it was, and I was so happy to to see the actually see what hundred percent looks like because throughout the entire show so far, we've only gotten like. Five percent. Well, 10%. I mean, we did get that one thing where, like, he went one thousand percent to protect Koga, right? Yeah, but like, but like, that was just like one plunge, and then we knew that, like, after that, he completely like destroyed himself. No, I mean, yeah, but but, but still, but still. But like, it was it was nice to see him go all out without consequences. Yeah. He always he always has. There's always a cost. To hit using his power, but not this time. Yeah, yeah, because of Aerie and her time manipulation situation. All right, so I think we talked about everything related to that arc. So now let's talk about the school festival arc. Unless you have anything you want to say about the last arc. No, I think we're good to move on. All right, so let's talk about the school festival arc, which is actually a couple of mini arcs inside, but. We're gonna talk about it in the grand scheme of things. So, I guess I'll start it off with um, with the actual school festival. So, long story short, Aerie's in the hospital, and Midoriya wants uh, Aerie to like like come and smile and just like you know look around with Mirio and all the other cats, right? So the school festival is coming, and it's like a place where they can just like you know show out, you know, like show off, and you know be cool and all that stuff. So, Class 1A decided that they wanted to do like a rock band situation. And, oh my god, Bakugo on the drums, dude. Yo, I did, yo, Bakugo on the drums caught me off guard, dude. I, it's the same. Like, cause when they had the show, like the final show, like, I was like, alright, show me Bakugo. Let me see it play the goddamn drums. I wanna see that shit, but. I don't think they showed it a lot. Like it was like it was like maybe Minga School or something like that. That yeah, they didn't show a lot, but Bakugo on the drums was really funny. But I also thought, do you remember what they have with Mineta? Mineta was like he wanted to play the guitar for his character design. Oh yo, I forgot about that. Yo, yo, his character design. Scoop me, cause my god. Dude, like straight up, he was like saying, we got, like, he was like, curse my character design for being too short, or, or like something like that, to not be able to play the drums. That shit was fire. Like, oh my god. That was good. I remember that. Was that. Meta, that, meta, that meta humor. Oh my god. It was great. I know. <laughs> that, was, that was really good. That was so good. Oh my god. But. Uh. Wow, I don't know where we should go from here, but oh my god, I got, I got. So let's talk about Bakugo and Togaroki because holy shit, they got sidelined in the last arc. But like, <laughs> like the last arc, like they were just like nine because like those two are like really great characters, right? Like they're like those two are fan favorites, like for a lot of people, I would say. I would say, I don't know, I would say though, and. It was funny that they got sidelined in the last two arcs, but allow but Dad's did allow Kirishima to grow. But we had this whole thing where like they failed like the hero the the licensed hero exam and then like they decided to go and they were playing with kicks or something like that. No but you know playing with kicks, but you know like trying to like teach them respect or some shit like that. And then like it was so crazy how these kids were like acting. And then there's like this like one little kid that was like a Bakugo 2.0 dude, like it was hilarious. And like Bakugo was like giving him like words of advice, like saying like, if you think you're the best, like if you don't be too cocky or something like that, like cause he knows, because he was like that shit too. But that, that was also pretty good too. Either way, there's actually two other things, well three other things that you want to talk about. We leave the other two for the end, but let's talk about, um, let's talk about, who are those two people? I literally forgot his name. 
You're like the uh, two people that are like little streamers and video. And oh like, yeah, uh, Gentle Criminal and La Brava. Yes, yes. The voice actor for Gentle Criminal was, ooh, beautiful. But, Lex, I'm gonna let you take this one. Your thoughts on them. I mean, I thought they were interesting characters, right? Because, uh, Deku, I think he pointed it out, like, he, like his ideals and like gentle criminals ideals they're very similar they have very similar philosophies but like the the way they went about carrying them out was that that's where that's where they went on different paths so like gentle criminal could have easily become someone like deku and then deku could have easily become someone like gentle criminal so I thought that dynamic was really interesting. I thought it was great. The only issue I had with it was that I thought there were great characters and everything, but the only issue I had was that if you like, I think this is like a big weakness for the My Hero Academia seasons overall, especially for like season three. Like they start off with a very strong arc, and then the next arc is usually like like an arc just to con like like a transition type of arc. And that kind of ruins the end. And I think for these guys, it was interesting, but it wasn't like super crazy good, great, in my opinion. Yeah, I honestly, sometimes I feel like what My Hero Academia should do, they should have done this with both season three and season four. They, they both have usually two big arcs, right? Yeah. I feel like the order of the arcs in each season should be switched. I mean, now it's kind of late, but... <laughs> nah, and I know, but, like, that way, if... That way, it finishes... That way, they both finish strong. Well, my record game in Season 4, they have a little different ending. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. That's... In the, but those... I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Those aren't, like, part of the arcs. They're just, like, epilogue sort of thing. Like, they're just, like, extra tail-end episodes. Yeah. To set everything up. All right. Let's actually talk about the main dude that stole the entire show at the end. And in my, thing, my opinion, I think one of the greatest characters of My Hero Academia, probably top three, maybe top five, maybe top five, let's say top five, for me, Endeavor. Holy shit, dude. Like, first, let's talk about how he's trying to become a better father. Trying to improve himself with Togoroki in them. Like, he's just trying to get better at it. And, like, trying to be a bit more nicer and everything of that sort of nature. And, like, the whole speech that he had where they were, they were saying who the, the top heroes are and all that stuff. And then, like, Endeavor was, like, saying, like, you got anything to say? Oh, before that, before that. His thing where he asks All Might, like, what he should do as the number one hero. Like, how he should build that wall back or anything like that. That was also great, too. But, but the thing is that, like, when they're introducing all the heroes and all that stuff, and they're saying anything he should say. And Endeavor just said, just watch me. Clean, cut, simple, easy. That line right there was amazing. And, yeah, <laughs> I still remember that one scene where, like, Endeavor was trying to be, like, a nice guy, and, like, the kids were, like, the kids were so, like, did not like him anymore because he wasn't, he pretty much wasn't a jerk or a yeah. mean guy. No, 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 he's like, no, wait, he was like, a, he gave him an autograph, did he give him an autograph? I, I don't remember, but I remember no, that the no, kid- No, but he was next to him, and then he's like, I don't want- He's like, no, I think he did give him an autograph, he's like, I don't want it anymore, you were- hey, you, you, you're doing you're nice not, now. You're not, <laughs> like, you <laughs> changed in like one second. Yo, oh my god, that, that was funny, dude, that was funny. But, let's actually get to the main highlight, the Nemu. Endeavor- Versus that ridiculous Gamma Group. First, the animation of that entire fight was brilliant. Brilliant. Like It's the best we've ever had on the show. Dude, 
Like, that episode, I think, saved the entire season, like, at the end of the season. That was, like, one of the greatest endings of a season I have seen in a while. Because, holy shit, dude, like, that entire fight was insane. But, more importantly, it was like, and there was chance to try to become the number one hero. And there was a moment where Endeavor was going down, and, like, people were running away, and they were, like, scared and everything of that stuff, because Endeavor couldn't be that number one hero but but the moment like Togoroki was watching all his kids was watching all of that stuff and like they're like they're like really scared for a moment and like and then that I think it was actually the same kid I think it was actually the same kid but he was the one that pointed out that look look and that was still fighting for us he hasn't lost yet and stuff like that. That was insane. And then his very end move where it goes like Promingings Burst, right? Like plus Ocean Promingings Burst. Oh my god. And then like when he just like just like came up with just his hang up. And then like was like Angeber is stinging. And then like All Might fell. And then like All Might who else fell? Togoroki fell like that was Damn. That was, that was like, damn. That was crazy. But yeah. That is all I have to say about Endeavor. Do you have anything you want to add to that? Nah, I think you covered it all. I mean... <laughs> Yo, dude! I just realized, there's, a, there's actually something we forgot. It, like, um, one other thing, was, it was every smile. Right? Oh yeah, with the candy apple. Yeah, 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 but not just that, not just that, like, the, the, at the end of the show, uh, as the rock star show, and uh, she was, like, she was smiling all high and bright and everything, like, oh, man, that was good. That, 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 that made my little heart, you know, that made my little heart weak, man. I he's definitely so, teared up a bit. He's so cute. I definitely he's... teared up a bit, like, I definitely teared up a bit, like, it was, it was, a, uh, it was good. It. <laughs> Yo, Ari, Ari's so cute. She's like, and then when she talked to Deku. She's like, I was looking at you, and then you went away for a little bit, but then you came back. Dude, that, that, that was good, man. Honestly, that was good. Oh my God, one more thing we forgot. What's that dude that can fire lasers from his belly button? Aoyama. Yo, remember how like he was like being such a creep to Midoriya when he was like, I know your secret, and then like he showed up literally right outside his window in the middle of the night? <laughs> like, what cheese? Yeah, like what? <laughs> what cheese? Yo, that shit was crazy. Yo, and then, but like the big thing is that he was saying that like he, like, like Midoriya reminds a little similar to him because. Just like Midoriya, uh, um, Ayayama, Ayayama, whatever his name is, um, he has issues with his power, his, his quirk is incompatible with his body. So I thought that was also nice to see, like, a little bit of development from him. But I, I, that, that, but still, the, the whole scam thing was kind of crazy. That, that yeah, was... Yeah, man, we got a little, we got a little bit of development from Jiro, too, because the whole... The whole performance part, the whole concert part was, it was, basically she was the leader of that whole thing. So. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember, I remember. But, like, like, it was, like, her parents, like, she's talking to her parents and, like, your love for music and everything of that nature, I remember that. I remember that. So that was some good character development for her. Yep. Alright, so I think we talked about everything for that season, right? Yep, I think we covered it. Alright, so, I don't have anything to add, but you have anything to add? No. Alright, so I, I guess this is it. This is what we're going to, this is the end of this podcast, so hopefully you guys enjoyed our, oh, wait, <laughs> y'all, we forgot, we didn't even give this thing a score, dude. Alright, I forgot that we do that. <laughs> yeah, I forgot, I know. So what do you what do you give uh, season four score? I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. 
I gave it 8.5 out of 10. Really, the problem was the, the transition arc. That was, I think, that's kind of what kind of brought it down. But, like, the overall series, if you combine all four seasons, easy 9 out of 10. Easy 9 out of 10. But, yeah, the horse. The whole show is 9 out of 10. But like, it, it, it's greatness. Without question, it's greatness. For those of you watching this video and are thinking of watching My Record Gamer, just watch it. Just watch it. Just watch it. That's yeah, all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Ten, 10 years from now, it's gonna be It's gonna be one of the classic animes. That's of true. Our That's true. I mean, hell. One Piece is a classic and it's still going on. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm still, I don't care, I'm, I'm still waiting for Game of Thrones, like, I'm afraid, like, some Game of Thrones stuff is gonna dude, happen, though. Dude, 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 like, dude, you're gonna be waiting for a long time, and honestly, dude, I don't think that's gonna happen. I, I have, like, that's what, and, dude, that's what people said about Game of Thrones, they're like, it's the best thing ever, and then it tanked. But, like, the thing is that I, uh, Oh, I, I love how you just talking about Game of Thrones for a second, but I kind of did have my doubts about it just because, like... No, just, no, you can't say that. No, like, it's too late to say I that. Know, Every, I know, I know, I know. Everyone, everyone says that now. They're like, oh, I knew it was going to be that. No, you didn't. Everyone was like... No, 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 no. That's not what I was trying to say. The thing is that I kind of noticed, I think, from, like, Season 5 or Season 6. At the moment they stopped copying the books, I thought the quality of the writing went down a bit, but I still found it entertaining. This is eight, though. Yeah, yeah dude. you're right. Dude, as soon as Joffrey, <laughs> dude, as soon as Joffrey died, it went down, like, it started to go downhill. I, like, I don't, I don't remember, like, I think I'm, I, I don't exactly remember. I think it was the end of season four, or, like, or yeah, like the end of season, season one it, four it's either, it's either end of season four or end of season five, whichever one it was. I don't remember exactly which one. But I know after that, I kind of went a bit downhill in terms of story, but it was still good enough. It was still good enough. Like, like the show definitely lost the cleverness that it used to have, but, like, it was still good enough. For season 8, ooh. Season 8, ooh. Alright, let's well, start talking about Game of Thrones here, because that's this not the whole point of this video. But, yeah, I think you might <laughs> want to cut that part out. Yeah, I, I'll leave it on, I'll leave it on. I, okay, I don't care, I'll leave it on. Alright, but... Alright, so now that we said everything, let's do this again. This is where I would like to end the video off here. So for those of you who are watching this video, thanks for watching. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, Facebook, all that good stuff. My main YouTube channel, just subscribe. You know, comment down below. Give me a like, it really helps. Also subscribe to my uh, my live reaction channel. And also, be sure to follow Poisonville on his Instagram as well. The link to his account will be in the description below. And is there anything you got you gotta say, Poisonville? Um, no. Um, thank you so much for having me, and thank you to you guys for joining us in our discussion. Thanks for listening. All right. Yeah, well, there we go. All right. So, peace, guys. Stay breezy. Stay breezy.